down. He's currently fleeing on Gaian towards Highway 246. Unit 2, you will force the target onto Highway 3. We'll have a transport unit ready. Your eyes, Jed. Target acquired. We're in pursuit. Moving from the highway towards the Yoyogi Interchange. Sorry, guys. You may think you're sticky, but watch this! We've closed off Gaian Street East. Understood. Hey guys, Magus here, and as I've told you guys in my plan for restructuring this channel, we are returning to my roots. And this is really a return to my roots. An anime review, holy fucking shit. I haven't done one of these maybe in about a decade, even when I was making p videos periodically. I remember I did those when I was almost going to come back in the 2011, late 2011, early 2012 era. We all know how that turned out, but no more need of discussion on that matter. But, we are going to revisit a classic. Now, I do know that I reviewed this very film back in the day, during my early days. And, of course, you just saw a clip from one of my favorite anime films of all time, and that's Megazone 23. Now, as you all know, if I... Well, not if. I'm going to do more anime reviews. They will be focused on the old school variety. And you can't get more old school than Megazone 23, because this shit fucking rocks, you know? And why does it rock? Now, if you just watch a new anime, you guys really should do yourself a favor and dig. I'm not saying old is better. For me, it's better. But if you like new anime, cool. But if you're really wanting to see what made a lot of us fall in love with anime, that sort of very beautiful, mature storytelling in films like this and films like uh, Akida and Ghost in the Shell and Ninja Scroll and all these wonderful films we grew up with, Golgo 13, you know, all of these fucking incredible anime films that had so much contextual depth to them and great storytelling. They, this was really animation for adults because when we think of animation for adults here in the United States, we think of stuff like Rick and Morty or The Simpsons or South Park or any of that stuff. But to me, we don't see very many people use, especially here in the States, use I think what I'm saying is animation to tell very adult stories as opposed to them telling a stories with adult humor and that's what attracts me to old school anime because we've got a lot of that going on you know even stuff like ovas like bubblegum crisis and things like that they all have mature storyline and we'll talk a little bit more about bubblegum crisis in the in the later but megazone 23 is an anime film and it's one of my favorites it's just so fucking good if you haven't seen it well i'm gonna post a link where you can fucking watch it and it's here on YouTube. I hope you do fucking enjoy it. Now, make sure when you do watch this link, it is the Japanese dub. Um, do make sure that you put on the, what you would call it, the, the, the closed caption. Because it doesn't have the subtitles automatically. Now, this whole thing came about, this whole film, was released on March 9th, 1985. It was directed by Nomura Ishiguro. And he is... One of the classics. I mean, he did Space Battleship Yamato, Super Dimension Century Orgus. He did, no, yeah, Super Dimension Fortress Macross, Super Dimension Century Orgus, not Fortress. You know, he did all of these great things, you know. And this is, this is pure, his classic take on it. And I, I think what makes this movie so good is the depth and the, that it builds. Because the movie really starts... And again, I'm not going to summarize because summaries are not reviews. That's coming up in the rant, just to let you guys know. Just the beginning. Real, real quick summary. You meet a guy named Shogu who's this really restless basketball... Not basketball. What the fuck? What is it? Motorcyclist. Motorcyclist. And he's just jamming through the streets like a badass motherfucker. And he runs into this room in Yui... And he falls for her. But while their love story is very important to it, it's not the core of it. Shit really goes to hell when his friend Shinji st steals this bike and let's just say fucking hell breaks loose. Now, a lot of people say this film inspired The Matrix. The Wachowski sisters, I think they're known by now, they, they discredited it. 
you know, they didn't say that this influenced them. But if you watch Dark City and any of anything like that, this film is a take on that idea, the Matrix idea, the that type of stuff. I may have said too much, but watch it to understand what I mean. And this is the first part of a trilogy of films. There's a part two and a part three, and I believe a part four, or a part three, part two, one, two, something like that. If someone could correct me on the actual uh, details concerning part three and the remaining parts past part two, then we can do that. But really what I love about this is everything. The characters are great. Shogo is very well developed. He goes from someone who is just so reckless to someone whose reality is sh sh shit turned. And by the end of the film, this motherfucker is broken as all hell, just to say the least. His character development is superb. He matures with Yui as opposed to, you know, in the beginning, he just finds this cute girl and he, it looks like he's just getting, wanting to get a quick lay, but he actually develops feelings for her. She develops too. Her two friends are very vital, particularly to Nomi. I hope I'm saying that right. Little puffy haired, red haired girl. She seems like she's kind of the cutesy character, but goddamn, the way they utilize that character in particular is so important. And I will say this if you watch this standalone, which it can be. This has a very no country for old men ending. Which, you know, if you know what I mean by that, it does. Now, there is a part two. And we can, you know, get into part two when I do review that down the line. But if you watch it stand alone, man, this ending is fucking heartbreaking. And it is, it, it's a, I would say a cliffhanger. But also felt like there was closure to it. Like dark closure. Like like no country for old men in that sense. And I, I don't want to spoil the ending for you. But you should really watch this. The music is great. I fucking adore the soundtrack to this. As you know. Um, I, I'm not sure. Shit. I can't think of the song. It, Sentimentality on my shoulders. The English translation. Something like that. But man, that song that is sung by Eve, also important plot development. There's a pop star called Eve, who everyone loves. Won't go into too much of that. But she sings this great song, couple great songs in it. And the music is just really good old school Japanese pop. And it overlays, what what's amazing is it overlays this dark nature of this fucking story. That really builds into a clear mindfuck. And you gotta love the animation. This is pure 80s animation. It's got that 80s fucking look that I adore. I don't know what. But that 80s to probably even mid-2000. Not mid-2000. Late 90s anime look is just. I love it. And it's just. It's got that look to it. You know. Even from the poster I'm showing you. You can tell. You know. And like I said. If you have not seen this film. Watch it now. I will post the link to to it and i hope you guys watch it and enjoy it so like i said this film is a 10 out of 10 it is surely one of the best anime films i've ever seen and if you love stuff like akira or anything old school you know watch this we are gonna do more old school anime i am excited because i'm gonna look at stuff like orgus and fist of the north star again and we are just gonna go deep old school on this shit so i hope you guys look forward to it so 10 out of 10 for me for megazone 23 no excuses there's a fucking link where you can watch it here on youtube and with that guys magus out